Hello, my name's Arthur, and I am coming back at you with increasingly niche content. So I was thinking of titling this video, Being a Gay Trans Man in an Open Relationship, and then I was like, okay, no, who am I targeting? Like, two people on the whole internet? And, you know, th this video is inspired by a comment I got in one of my videos where someone was saying, hey, I would love for you to talk more about what it's like to be in an open relationship as a trans person. So, of course, that's where I'm coming at it from. I am a gay trans man in an open relationship. But as I was preparing this video, I started to write down notes, it's my little bit of prep work and reflections, and I realized that I think the dynamics of being trans in an open relationship are really just the dynamics of being in an open relationship, and that my advice and what I've learned through the courses of evolving through many open relationships I think is broadly applicable. And I, I also did my little bit of background work where <laughs> I will search on YouTube something similar to what I'm thinking of titling a video to make sure that I'm offering something valuable and new um, and not just repeating the same old drivel. And when I searched open relationship on YouTube, oh my god, you get such terrible content. It's all like, why all open relationships fail? Why I would never be in an open relationship? Should you ever consider consider dating a guy who wants to be in an open relationship, four things to think about before you open your relationship, and all from this very, like, negative angle. Um, and I think it's understandable that a lot of people are suspicious of open relationships, and I'll be upfront and say that, yeah, open relationships do require a lot of thought, a lot of care, a lot of effort, and they're more complex than your standard monogamous relationship that is sort of, like, handed to you. It's got, you know, it's the standard package, right? You have to create a lot of things from scratch if you're going to try to structure an open relationship. But I'm in a really happy open relationship, many of my friends are in happy open relationships, and you absolutely can be in a happy open relationship if that's something that's calling towards you. So what is an open relationship? Um, for me, what that means is that we are sexually open but romantically monogamous. So we are able to sleep with other people, but we don't date other people. I think typically th that's often what people mean when they say open relationship. Often if people mean that they're dating a bunch of people, and romantically involved with a bunch of people, then they'll say that they're polyamorous or their relationship is kind of structured in a poly way. At least that's my experience. Okay, so what does being in a healthy open relationship feel like? Well, I can tell you about mine. You guys met my boyfriend Harry in another video, and him and I are open, and it works really well for us. We have this dynamic generally of just feeling like we're on a non-stop adventure, and we have lots of fun together. We like to do crazy things, and we like to explore and just have a good time. And part of that is sexual, too. We love going to clubs, we love <laughs> pursuing other couples together, and we love comparing crazy grinder messages, and it just feels like our openness is a journey that we're on together. We're both exploring sort of separately, but then coming together as one couple and as two people who care about each other, and learning and growing together. And that sounds like a bunch of gobbledygook, but <laughs> it makes sense to me. I think this dynamic that we have, it feels like some mix of, like, best friends getting t together at the dining hall and gossiping, and also sharing something immensely intimate and special. And somewhere in between, and that's what being open feels like. It's like we're being vulnerable about a certain part of ourselves, and also just like having a good time. I think that, especially as a trans person, honestly, <laughs> having Harry like witness firsthand some of like the just wild shit people will say or comment to me, I think has allowed him to understand my experience and sort of take part in my transness in some sense in a way that we wouldn't have experienced if we weren't open. And I find that really special and fun, and we joke all the time about all the, like, really silly situations we'll end up in, in part because of my transness, and in part because I'm so cute and weird. And these key positive feelings of, like, fun and connection. I think that's what this good, healthy, open relationship, that's what I center it around, is is fun and connection. And if those feelings weren't there, it wouldn't be worth it for me. It's not just about, like, being free or just hooking up with people. It is about, like, growing and, and having a good time and, and feeling really centered in my relationship with Harry. If it wasn't there, I wouldn't be doing this. Yeah, so there's something fun about hooking up with someone, getting these little tidbits of a life story and of desires and insecurities and feelings and all that, and then coming back with my person, with my partner, and kind of assembling this mosaic of all the people that I've encountered. I don't know, it's fun. <laughs> so what does being in an unhealthy open relationship feel like? I've certainly been in unhealthy open relationships. For me, it felt like sort of the opposite of connection and the opposite of fun. Being in an open relationship felt like it distanced me from my partner, like I was sitting on the sidelines as they experienced a world that was inaccessible to me. There were things like gay clubs and like grinder and just like being happy with your body and willing to let people see you naked that just felt so inaccessible to me at various points in my life. 
And so I sat there and watched my partners explore things while I sat there and felt bad about myself. And while I wondered like what I wasn't giving them, because I also, in addition to feeling insecure about me, felt insecure about our relationship and felt insecure about our sex life and insecure about our connection. And so being open and watching them be able to access that with other people really heightened all of those feelings and it made me feel really bad about us, really bad about myself, and like fundamentally like an outsider. Like this was something I wasn't participating in, this was something that was happening to me and to our relationship. Like our openness was not something I had agency in and that felt really bad. And I think that's something that like I see a lot of people, at least to some degree, feel that when they're in an open relationship. And it can be an open relationship where you wanted it, and you asked for it, and you were down, but then somehow you still end up feeling like you're on the sidelines, and you still end up feeling like you're wallowing in your insecurity. And that's really hard, because those unhealthy open relationships I'm talking about, I mean, it's not black and white. Like, they were, they were ones where, like, I preferred that over being monogamous. I was not forced to be open. We were, and it just wasn't really working. So what do you do then? So that's what I'll talk about. I think the first thing I'd recommend is just sit back and reflect on what you really want. If you were 100% secure, if you were really confident in yourself, confident in your relationship, if you had all the money and all the time in the world, what would be your ideal relationship structure? What would be the stuff that you would do just with you and your partner? And what would be the stuff that you would be open to your partner doing with other people? So this is a question I think everyone should ask themselves because often for many, many people, sex is totally off the table. They only want to do that with their partner. and That's the only thing they're comfortable with doing with their partner. But there are like, where you draw that line, that is something that's pretty malleable for a lot of relationships. For example, I would argue that anyone should feel comfortable with their partner texting other people and having friends outside the relationship, right? Like, for example, long walks and trips and, you know, going out to restaurants, those are things that we do that make our relationships feel really special, but those are also things that we often do with friends. So where do you draw that line? Um, and what makes sense for you? And you might think about it, imagine your ideal world, and maybe what you're imagining is that you're with a partner that wants to be sexually monogamous with you, and you're like, wow, if my partner wanted that, that would be so amazing, and I, I would really prefer that. Okay, then maybe you should be sexually open, right? It's not, I think there is a thing where like a lot of queer people um, tend to consider that as an option, being sexually open. Because our relationship dynamics are already pretty unconventional. I mean, we're like not man plus woman dating, right? So we consider a lot of things. And part of that consideration, people are like, hmm, like do we really need to be sexually monogamous? Well, maybe you do want to be, right? <laughs> Just because if you are queer, just because you are, it does not mean you have to be sexually open. And there are plenty of queer people who also want romantically monogamous relationships. Hell, there are queer people that want, like, extremely conventional, like, marry, settle down, move to the suburbs, two and a half kids plus a dog. Like, they are out there, and they're there for you, and you should not feel pressured one way or another to pursue any sort of type of relationship just because of what identity label you happen to fall under. So, think about that. In my case, again, my answer was that I wanted to be sexually open but romantically monogamous. And that was something I was aware of, I've been aware of for, for a bit. But I also knew that I was struggling. And so I was like, okay, like, what do I do given that I know I want this relationship stru structure but I'm having a hard time pulling it off? Well, you don't need to leap into your ideal relationship structure. A lot of, I think, building a relationship in general is growing up that relationship together. Like, maybe in the ideal world, you want to be married, settled down with a partner, blah, blah, blah. Um, <laughs> oh my god, the fireworks are killing me, guys. <laughs> Anyways, you can tell that it's nearing 4th of July. Uh, anyway, so maybe in your ideal world, you want to be settled down off in the suburbs with a partner. But on your first hinge date, you're not going to jump into that, right? It takes some time to grow with your person until you reach that place where you actually are comfortable spending a ton of time together and you're, you know, you're ready to get married, right? That doesn't happen immediately. And similarly, maybe in your ideal world, you want to be sexually open, but you need to grow that trust with, with your person before you feel comfortable doing that. And you need to feel confident and happy in your body before you feel comfortable doing that. These fireworks, oh my God, but I'm in the middle of the wind. I don't want to stop. I'm not going to stop. 
it's crazy. <laughs> um, yeah. And you can just think generally, like maybe you become, maybe you'd want to like travel the world twenty four seven in your ideal relationship, but you have to have a job and you need money. Yeah, so it's okay. Like maybe you want you and your partner to be the kinds of people that occasionally sleep with other people. But maybe you just don't feel there yet. That's okay. It takes time. I myself have wound back the openness of my relationships when I realized it wasn't working for me at various points in time, or similarly where my partner has realized it wasn't working for them at various points in time. It happens. It's good and it's okay to realize that. And just because you know at some point what you're striving for, it doesn't mean you need to jump right into that. And another reason why I mentioned that is that if what you want in the end of the day is a sexually open relationship, but you have a lot of insecurities and you have a lot of like bad feelings that are coming up, so you keep on pushing it away, being sexually closed isn't going to get rid of those feelings. Being open might be drawing them out, it might be making them more painful, it might be making them hard to deal with, but it isn't creating the feelings. They're not coming out of nowhere and they're not caused by the fact you're open. They are like emphasized by the fact you're open. And I think that was an important thing for me to realize at times where I've struggled with things. And so just to make it crystal clear, it might be the feelings are too hard to deal with when you're open, so you need to work on them as a couple and as an individual while closed, but they aren't caused by being open, they're just like emphasized. To give you an explicit example um, from my current very healthy relationship, because I feel like it's a little mean to talk about <laughs> former past relationships um, that haven't worked out, something that both me and Harry have dealt with, like both of us, um, is feeling like there's this sort of gay hierarchy that's related to sort of hookups in some sense. And by that I mean, you imagine at the very top of the hierarchy are these like Twitter gays that are beautiful and toned and, you know, I don't know, like, like participating in the coolest parties and making NSFW content and are just like desired by everyone and they are so hot and they're stunning. And then, you know, you place yourself somewhere on that, right? You're like, okay, I'm not there, but maybe I'm here, but maybe I'm here, but maybe, you know, whatever. And how do you place yourself? Well, part of the way that you place yourself is off of desirability because that's sort of how you've concocted this whole hierarchy, right? Is the reason those people are at the top is because they're the most desired and because everyone wants them. And so if you want to know where you are, you have to figure out how many people want you and what, like, tiering of people want you. So obviously, as I'm describing it, this is not, like, a healthy attitude to have, and I think it's not one that people tend to have explicitly, because when you say it out loud, you're like, mm, that's not good. But it's tempting. It's tempting regardless of who you are. My partner is not trans. I am trans. I've had my insecurities about this perceived thing, based on the fact I'm trans, right? Where I literally remember thinking to myself, I'm like, I would say things like, oh, like, well, I'm trans, so it's, like, minus five points, but, like, I'm really funny at parties, and so I wish I could just meet people in real life because then I would, you know, be right up my correct place because people can look beyond my transness if they just met my, you know, blah, 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 and I, you know, I, I don't want to, like, be on apps because then people will see that I'm trans and then I will only be getting the people that are, like, you know, not in my, you know, because the people that I should, they just won't because they'll see that I'm trans. Really, like, bad thoughts. And I would have those thoughts, and then I would see my partner, you know, hooking up with people and I'd be like, wow, like, imagine being so uninhibited and he just gets to exist on his correct spot on the ladder because, it, you know, and I wasn't having those thoughts explicitly, but I was having those thoughts, right? And then suddenly my partner would have feelings of like, okay, you know, like, you're having a bad day, you're having a hard time, where do you center your self-worth? Well, if you're in a community that tells you that that is your self-worth, then that's like how you need to prove it to yourself. That hierarchy sort of devalues, uh, it devalues real connection, right? Because it's all about chasing something. And it's like rough, it's not fun. And again, I meet so, so, so many gay men that buy into that, like it's kind of crazy. So both him and I had bought into it a little and it was hurting both of us. And then when we were open, it kind of emphasized that because it was like, okay, like we could tell we were engaging unhealthy with this, unhealthily with this. Okay, but when we took breaks from hooking up with other people, that didn't go away. We both still had bought into it and believed in it, and we're still in part, like, some ways attributing our self-worth to this perceived thing. We hadn't fixed it, we had just not been engaging with it, but it made it easier to deal with, right? And so I, I think him and I both realized we wanted to grow beyond that as individuals and as a couple, and so we 
both worked on it in our own ways and grew out of it, I think, a little. And that's not to say that it isn't, like, still a tempting thing to engage with, especially when you're in a community and a culture that, like, acts like that. But I think him and I are a lot more mature than we were a year ago, both of us. And that makes our openness feel more comfy. Uh, but that problem is something we had to deal with whether or not we were open. I think if we had just been purely monogamous, we would have still just believed all that, still had the same insecurities and the same issues. And now, both of us are just like markedly more confident and stable people. Like, I don't think about my transness that way anymore. I do not think of it as minus five points at all. Like, at all. <laughs> not even close. And me getting beyond that point is just critical to me feeling comfy and happy in an open relationship. You cannot like exist stably in an open relationship if you have this chip on your shoulder that your transness is like making you unable to find partners. I think that I see this attitude all the time on Reddit, honestly, where people will sort of slip into this mm, like really bad, um, really bad almost like incel-like dynamic around their transness where they perceive that there are all these people that should be there for them and they aren't and it's all because of their transness. And yes, it, there are unique challenges around being trans for sure. But like, <laughs> I don't know. It's like everyone has their own package to deal with and you got to embrace what you have. And if you aren't there yet, it's going to be really hard to be open while you are perceiving that you're missing all these opportunities because you're trans. And now instead, the way I think about it is that there are people, one, there are so many people who do not care that I'm trans. Like there are just so many people who do not care that I'm trans. These are people who learn after the fact that I'm trans, like who think that I'm cis and I tell them. There are people that learn before the fact, like they meet me and they immediately know I'm trans and they do not care. There are people who, beyond don't caring, actively like love that I'm trans, love everything about me and my trans body and my trans experience, find it interesting, find it exciting, I don't care. Like, my transness is not a problem, it is a part of me, and it is wonderful. And now that I'm there, it just makes, it makes being open just a lot easier and a lot better to deal with. So yeah, that's the kind of stuff like you as a trans person or you as anyone with any insecurity just need to work on. I think that it's pretty easy to feel these insecure feelings very intensely if you're trans because you are told repeatedly that your body is undesirable and no one wants you and so of course you buy into that. But it's also easy to feel that way if you have like sort of any attribute that society has those messagings about. If you feel insecure about your height, you need to work on that before you try to be in an open relationship. Or work on that like while being in an open relationship. But you need to work on that. It's going to make your relationship better and happier and healthier. If you are insecure about anything about your appearance, about whether you think you're charming enough, you need to work on that. Because that's the most common thing that I think makes open relationships really hard. It's not... I mean, jealousy is for sure a thing that some people experience, right? And I've experienced that too, right? Where I have felt like the pure feeling of like, oh, my partner is some with someone else and that feels bad. But guess what? The jealousy really went away when I felt, one, very confident that my partner loves me, likes me, finds me hot, and two, very confident that I can have the experiences that my partner is having, or the right ones for me. Feeling like an active participant in the open dynamic, and I realized that some of these feelings that I thought were jealousy were actually more like envy. I wanted the experiences that they were having, and I thought I couldn't have them because I was trans. I could have them, I just needed to feel okay with my transness. I need to do that internal journey myself. And I think it was okay to do that journey well in an open relationship, but boy, did it make, like, ultimately the outcome a lot more fun when I reached that place of stability. And so, like, generally a message, I guess, specifically for trans people, if your partner is into men, they will hook up with cis men. If your partner is into women, they will hook up with cis women. If your partner is open-minded enough to be dating a trans person in the first place, they will probably hook up with more trans people. And you need to be okay with those things, right? I think I see a lot of people, let's say I get, I'm a trans man specifically, who will say things like, oh my god, I feel so insecure that my partner is immediately hooked up with a cis man, blah blah blah, they must have wanted someone with a penis. And I'm like, okay, if your partner is into men, like you, guess what there are more of, cis men or trans men? There are more cis men. That's, you know, how it happens. Similarly, I will see people who are like, again, trans men, who are like, Oh my god, my partner hooked up with a cis woman. They must have wanted women all along. And I'm like, if your partner was bisexual, you knew that. They were, 
they are, like, that, you know, that's what it is. If you felt insecure about their sexuality, like, that's just a problem in of itself. And then I also people who, you know, whose partners are going to put the trans person, and they're like, oh my god, is my partner a chaser? And it's like, well, they are clearly open-minded to all sorts of bodies and experiences, so, like, this shouldn't be too surprising. And I think at the end of the day, what it boils down to is that a lot of trans people are just really, like, insecure, because, like, it's very hard to be trans, it's very hard to be told, again, I'm very sympathetic to it, it's very hard to be told over and over again that, like, your body is an accommodation that people are, like, willing to be okay with. And so no matter what gender and what sex your partner hooks up with, you're gonna feel some kind of way about it. And that's, I think, what you have to realize, right? Like, was there really an ideal gender for your partner to be hooking up with, or was it just that you were gonna feel insecure no matter what because of the burden you carry right now? I think another piece of advice I have is to listen to your feelings, but, like, also don't. <laughs> and by that, what I mean is that some of us, like myself, are hyper-communicators at times, and I think you have to be aware of where you fall on the spectrum. An example of what I mean by that is that, let's say something happens. Your partner hooks up with someone, and let's say, for example, let's say that, <laughs> to make it not something trans, um, I wish that I was taller. Let's say that my partner hooked up with someone who was like 6'4", and I feel this feeling in my gut of like, oh my god, he really wanted a guy who was 6'4 all along. He always wanted it. He was just settling for me. He doesn't really love me. He doesn't care. He doesn't really show me that he loves me. He neglects me. Like blah 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 blah, and I go down this sort of shame spiral, right? Okay, how do I know if A, my partner really actually did just want someone who was tall, and like, that is like clearly what he wants and I'm not satisfying him. B, um, he doesn't care at all, but I'm like feeling some neglect in our relationship and I want him to put in more care and effort. C, I am just feeling like really insecure about my height, and I am then sort of shifting those feelings onto how I feel about his hookup, or D, it's just taking some time, and like, it's just random thoughts going on in my head, and it doesn't need to mean too much. Okay, it could be like any of those four things, <laughs> and you don't really know. And you just need to take a little bit of time to uh, let the feeling move, right? Take a day, let your partner hook up with someone else, see how you feel as time goes on, and the answer will become more clear to you. Just because you have the feeling doesn't mean it has to have like a really deep and intrinsic and very clear and very linear meaning. Um, and so what I've been tempted to do at times and what I have done at times is immediately initiate very serious conversations with my partner about every negative feeling I'm having. <laughs> and like, that's not always very helpful because sometimes nothing is going wrong, sometimes you're just adjusting. Like, sometimes you're doing everything you can to work on your insecurities, your partner is doing everything they can to show you that they love you, and your brain is just, like, two steps behind. And you don't want to then spend hours and hours in circles about insecurity and jealousy when, like, you've done all there is to do. It's okay. And sometimes the feelings actually have a lot of real meaning. And I've had times where, like, after, you know, a few weeks I've been like, wait, Actually, this is coming from a real place. Like, I was really perceiving that my partner needed to prioritize me in a certain set of way, and I need to communicate that. Um, and so, you know, then you wait some time, and then you're like, hey, I would love if you would plan more deliberate dates for us. Or, you know, you reflect on it, and you realize, whoa, like, actually, I feel, like, way more intensely than I thought I did about my height. I thought I had it under control, but I don't. Okay, I'm going to set aside some time to talk with some friends about that, and I'm going to sort of think about ways that I can feel better about my height myself. Or, you know, maybe the feeling just goes away. And so I think that, that there's a lot of being in an open relationship that involves being like very in tune with your feelings and really knowing who you are and what's going on and what's going to make you feel okay and also you feel connected with your partner. And so that's the same stuff that like I, I think I talk about generally in life and feeling happy in life, which is like journaling, having good friends, having a good relationship with a therapist, it all helps, right? And um, because it is like real work, I think, piecing together an open relationship, and especially if you're trans, because you come with this like really particular set of baggage that interacts in a very particular way with an open relationship. Um, but yeah, I'm happy to be in an open relationship. I realize this is like, <laughs> still probably was a pretty niche video, and it's probably a lot to be saying on the internet, but I guess the reality of it is like, I am in love, I am very happy, and I, I think I'm just beyond feeling ashamed about the fact that 
<laughs> I'm in an open relationship and maybe that's a little bit deviant of me, but I just don't really care. I don't know, I think there's something really magical about queer sexuality, and so here I am talking about this on the internet and hoping that, you know, maybe this is only relevant for like two people, but if it is, I hope it's really relevant and really helps because that's why I'm in it, if that wasn't already clear. <laughs>